What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode in our Space Hulk playthrough in which we, the Space Marine Terminators, will once again extract the gelatin little tears from our Gene Stealer foes and we will bathe in them and we will rub them all over our armor. But anyways, it's mission number four today so I'm going to get that booted up of the Sins of Damnation playthrough campaign and it's number four, Cleanse and Burn. The assault continues, but not without losses. Two brother tech marines have been lost to the enemy, though their armor continues to transmit life signs. It is unthinkable that the gene seed of the Blood Angels should fall into the hands of the gene stealers. Peace will be theirs, even if it must be at their brother's hands. Sergeant of the squad, accept your orders. One squad is available for your command. Terminators enter here. Scanners indicate enemy movement in these areas. These are your targets. Find our missing brothers. Should they be beyond salvation, their destruction must be assured. Prayers of vengeance steal our souls. All right, so let's hit the loading screen here. And as I recall, I think the Blood Angels, who we're currently playing as, I think they were wiped out while boarding us. I'm pretty sure their entire chapter was wiped out, except for like 50 dudes while they were boarding a Space Hulk. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. I don't know that for sure. So I'm not the best source of information. I've been out of the Warhammer 40k circles for quite some time, but let's take a look here. Taking a look at the map, we have breach points here. We have another set of breach points over here. And a secondary, are these mirrored? It is. It's mirrored on both sides, so that actually makes our job a lot easier than you might expect. What we need to do is we're going to create our squad so that they peel like an onion. And what I mean is they're going to start out linear, and the first guy in the line is going to peel off every time we reach a breach point. So the first guy in the row is going to break off right here. The second guy in the row is going to break off here. The third guy in the row is more than likely going to break off here. Or maybe here. This this juncture seems good right here. So they'll probably break off here and here. Just aiming that way. And our final marine. Yeah. And the other two, I think they'll be able to use the buddy system to go in here and wipe out these tech marines that are laying on the floor. They're quite wounded. Their eyes are still green. But from what I understand, gene stealers actually get really, really powerful when they steal the gene seed of space marines. But I'm not positive. I don't really know what a tech marine was doing in here anyways. I'm not completely sure. I thought this was like, I, I always thought that Terminators were the only ones allowed on Space Hulks. Once again, out of the circle for a while. So Squad Lorenzo, what we want to think about with Squad Lorenzo is who has a bolter. Sergeant Lorenzo has himself a power sword, which is this might be the first time we've encountered the power sword. What it does is the power sword allows the character to parry a blow that comes up against him, and that means he's going to force the enemy to re-roll their highest die roll. But because he's got a bolter, he's going to be in the front, and he's going to have the exquisite honor of standing right here and holding off our enemies. The second person in line is very likely going to be a normal person like... Who is that? Noctis? Yeah, Noctis will come along. The third person in line is going to be the one that we want to break off over here. The fourth person in line is clearly going to be our flamethrower soldier because he's got to go into the room and destroy the tech marine's body. And then his little buddy partner, Brother Goriel. There we go. So that's the buddy system right there. We need to take a look at Squad Gideon now. In a previous episode, I totally said something wrong about the hammer and the shield. I always get the names mixed up. I'm not a guy who remembers much, but what I do have on hand now is I understand what this does. Having the hammer allows him to get a plus two to his melee damage roll. That means he rolls an equal amount of dice as the gene stealers, from what I understand. The shield acts in collusion with that. The shield actually acts as a buff and forces your opponent to lose their highest dice. So this might actually make him a reasonable melee combatant. But at the same time, you never want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with gene stealers if you can help it. Up front in this one is going to be Brother Omnio. He's going to be taking this position. Second up is going to be Brother Scipio who's going to be taking... Actually, no, second up in the line is going to be Brother Valencio because he's got the chain fist which can saw down these doors if we don't shoot in time. He's also got to go through a lot more doors than everybody else to get to this position and actually hold off any of the gene stealers that try and make a rush for this entry. I don't know if I'm going to station him here with one, two, three... I'll probably station him right here because that gives him one, two, three, four, five shots. And this positioning him right here would give him one, two, three... 
four shots, assuming he couldn't shoot through the corner right there, which I don't know if he can or can't. I would rather just not risk it. The third person in the line is going to be Brother Scipio, who's going to break off right here, just like his mirrored squad. And the third person is going to be our auto gunner there. So we've got the assault cannon guy. He's going to be destroying the body to the south. It's going to take him two shots, though, so it's going to take a little bit more work. And in the back, I guess kind of making sure that our rumps don't become cleaved any more than they already are by Gene Steelers is going to be Sergeant Gideon. Actually, the squads are named after him, so that makes everything nice and easy. Let's jump straight on into this debacle and see what we can handle here. So there we are, teleporting in. First and foremost, we're just going to try and get Sergeant Lorenzo into position, and he's pretty much going to hold this spot for the rest of this mission. He's not going to be moving around a whole lot. We're going to sit him right here, and he's going to overwatch. we got three CP on that mission, which means that I'm not going to reroll. Down here, Brother Omnio has the next honor of holding this hallway by himself. We want to, because we're relying so heavily on Overwatch in this game, we always want to make sure that we have additional CP. CP is the only thing that you can unjam your weapon with. I tested it out, and I don't know if this is a bug or not, but I purposefully left characters with AP. I played this on my own. I purposefully left them with AP while they were Overwatching, and if the gun jammed, they still used CP. So I don't know if that's a bug or by design. It's been too long since I've played the game. I don't really know how everything works. But it's my experience that basically just leave yourself some CP if you're using Overwatch a lot. The next guy in live, Valencio, is going to be shooting at this door while walking forward. So let's get him trucking. And he managed to destroy it on the first roll. So six and a one on that first dice roll. Very, very nice. Well done, Sergeant Valencio, or Brother Valencio. He's not a sergeant yet. Everybody else is just going to move a single file. And there we are. Yes, We're going to do the same operation up here on the top, and if they don't manage to get the door open in time, it'll be disappointing, and I actually clicked the wrong thing right there. It's all right, though. We'll expend an extra AP to get this thing done. And we'll have him step, and he still didn't shoot. I thought I clicked this. Hold on. There we go. All right. Fantastic. All fixed up now. And he managed to shoot it on his first round, too, so all of our errors really only injured ourselves. Oh, never mind. He didn't shoot it on his first... He rolled... Was that a... That's weird. I thought that said a 6. That's a 5, though. Apparently, I don't know my numbers very well. We're going to use a CP to step him forward one more. We don't have any Gene Stealers on the radar, so we can fix our shortcomings, or my shortcomings. I'm not going to saddle you guys with my stupidity. All right, so these four are all up and in position, and that leaves us with a little bit of CP left. We're not going to get run on by Gene Stealers in the first turn, I don't think. That would turn out somewhat both nasty and hasty on their part. And so let's just bypass our turn and let them have their deal. So they're going to hit us from this direction first. That's an interesting decision on the part of the monster controller. It allows us to make a very good entrenched position right here without any pressure on us, which is exactly what we're going to do. So these guys are just going to overwatch for the rest of the level. There he is. Now these guys are going to move forward as rapidly as possible because the AI and their decision to make a run on us from this direction is going to leave us... A little bit waylaid here in the hallways, and that's the last place I want to be waylaid. I prefer to be waylaid elsewhere, but for the time being, we'll accept it as law, and we'll just kind of deal with the gene stealers as they come along. You'll notice here I'm leaving myself a little bit of extra entryway. That's because I'm going to try and have him shoot out the door in the next turn. I'm not sure if the gene stealer, he's going to have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to make it to us in the next turn. So we may find ourselves just kind of standing around with this upper group waiting for them to show up. That's okay, though. This group in the bottom can continue moving forward. Let's get everybody else filed in. Clear a path. And there we are. Let's go ahead and bypass our turn. Oh, they did spawn down here. I didn't see that one show up. That's weird that it didn't actually move the camera over in between them. Can he see him yet? Or is he... Locked off. Let's take a look with his first pair. Oh, he can kind of see him around the corner. We've got all the overwatches assigned. I'm going to be very careful about assigning my tasks because I find as I get more and more Marines, I tend to make more and more mistakes because it's just, I don't know, it's sort of attrition, I guess. I don't know what the word for that would be. It would be like organizational attrition where I just can't keep people organized once I start getting more and more and more of them and with an inability to assign subordinates. All right, he managed to waste this little bugger down here, which is good. Last thing we need is these guys making a run on us. We got two CP on that turn. I'm going to re-roll them. We got four. This sergeant here is going to be getting a little bit of action in the next turn. I'm always going to try and assign people to overwatch before I move anybody else because it's very easy to get yourself locked into a course of action and forget about doing all the things in your back line that are important. 
Sometimes these guys do something interesting where they'll bypass corridors and go for the team you don't expect. So I'm going to halt both teams for now. By halting both teams, that guarantees that when they make a move on us, we don't get ourselves butchered. All right, so these three right here are going to be the primary concern. He gets a couple of shots as they come in. It's almost worth considering maybe putting some rounds on that door, but I already overwatched him, so it's okay. Let's go ahead and see how this whole thing pans out. Hopefully he manages to kill these guys in the hallways. Very nice, very nice. Weapon His weapon has malfunctioned. He's going to unjam it with a CP that I left. We only have four, though, so hopefully there's not a ton of jams. There's the next shot. Kill on a five, and he got one to five. We managed to get ourselves... Oh. We managed to get ourselves... God, the machine gods... There we go, the machine spirits. I was using the wrong terminology, but we managed to clear that hallway. Let's see what they do over here now. There's a bit more butchery going on. We managed to roll. Let's take a look at those rolls. He jammed. We got a five and a five with a kill on six. God, he is just using up all kinds of CP. All right, so down he goes. And now they're going to try and hit us from this southernmost corridor. I don't like that, but it can be dealt with. I may move the upper team, but we're pretty much stuck in the same spot we were before. We have to decide whether or not it's worth it to move this team forward, face him this way in Overwatch. He might get flanked from this direction, and that leaves us with no CP to unjam bolters. Now, there are no readily apparent threats coming through both of these hallways. Which leaves me to somewhat question... Yeah, it leaves me to question the way that I want this whole thing to function. I don't want to get stuck in this hallway for too long, just overwatching everything to death. But at the same time, caution is always key. You always want to err on the side of caution if you can. He managed to destroy that door with his first shot. I'm going to take his second AP and see if we can destroy that door. Maybe at least getting something accomplished. About that door right there. Okay, that door's good. So let's try and blast this one down the hall. Oh, and we're going to undo that. What was that? God. Pretty sure I told you to shoot there, bud. Alrighty, and he managed to destroy that door. The benefit that we're going for with these doors being out of the way is if they decide to spawn troops down and in over here. And we're getting that trademark slowdown that the game tends to... I don't know. I just don't know. My hardware more than exceeds this game. So it's maybe I've actually turned settings down to it. It might be like an engine-related thing. There's been a lot of little foibles with this game. A lot of little strange things that pop up every now and again. Part of me is tempted to position him right there and turn him like so, but that's going to use up... Oh, that's going to use up all of my CP. Since we shot the doors down right there, I just... We're going to save it for any type of bolter fire that we can. Just unjamming bolters. They don't seem to be very... They don't seem to be very worthwhile. They don't seem to be mechanically valid, I guess is the way that I would put it. They are close, brothers. And so he's down now. He managed to roll a 6 and a 4 with a kill on 5. Ooh, and that one actually managed to dodge through several ranks. An interesting an interesting movement there. He actually managed to make a run on all of the fire that we had coming down on him. Weapon malfunction. Resumes it with a CP and hopefully kills that one off. Alright, let's see where their spawn locations are going to be. Ah, God, they're playing the same game. We're going to have to advance, I think. We're not really going to have a choice. Whether it's advancing by one square at a time or by two squares at a time, we're still going to have to do something. Let's consider this little guy right here has cover, so we need to get rid of him very, very badly. I'm going to move forward and see if we can... There we go. We attacked on the diagonal. I was going to take that freebie shot and see if I could get it to work for me. We absolutely did get it to work for us. We're going to continue moving ahead slowly, I think. Because I really don't want to get stuck just sitting in a corridor doing nothing. It's an easy trap to get yourself into, and one that I would rather avoid. Now, I do want to leave myself enough spaces to kill this group right here if they decide to do something stupid. I'm going to march this group by twos. We're going to take a little bit of risk here. We're going to move two squares. We've got an extra guy. Well, yeah, it's a risk. It's a risk I'm willing to take, though. So let's get everybody 
in place and overwatching. For enemy contact. We only have one CP and I forgot to reroll it already, so you know, I wish it was a little more I wish it popped up in the center of the screen every single turn and was like, here's your CP. Would you like to re-roll it? That's the design decision I would have gone with. This little bar on the bottom left corner, especially since when I record LPs, I keep it in windowed mode. This is a very small window, and with my bad eyesight, I can't really see it. I wish there was like a big pop-up in the center at the beginning of each turn. That would definitely jiggle my pickle. Let's end the turn here. And with everybody on Overwatch, I'm hoping this guy doesn't do anything nutty. Okay, good. He didn't. And if he did, I hope it was peanutty, because I love peanuts. We're still going to get a little bit of contention from there. There's only one CP to unjam this, so this could get very contentious right here. There's a kill. And that group's not going to move. I think we're okay. Good, good, good. Our lack of CP is alarming, but we're going to reroll that one. And we rolled a 1 again, so a double 1. We want to be very careful with the way we orchestrate ourselves in this turn. We only have one bolter on jam. Getting ourselves into unfortunate combat situations, not going to work out for us. However, what we can do is we've actually... Oh, never mind. Almost. We can almost get him into position. Now, I don't know what his firing line is going to look like. If he takes this spot right here, if he could overwatch this direction and fire around the corner, sort of with like an arm reaching around, I would go for that. But instead, since I have no other option, we're just going to keep marching him forward and hope for the best. I don't think this guy... One, two, three, four, five, six... Yeah, this guy can't get to him anyways. So I can leave him semi in a weird position right there. We're going to have everybody overwatch that can overwatch. This group is slightly behind. But once we get this guy cleared out, they can take full four steps and try and get themselves into position if they can. So yeah, I think our next peel is going to be to the inside corridor of each of these just to make sure that everything that comes out gets laid out this gentleman needs to practice his overwatching abilities and that leaves us with all four overwatches in place let's do this thing we only have one cp though so there's this is a high risk level right now we are a high risk turn there's a lot of things that could go potentially wrong especially if we get bum rushed by a lot of gene stealers which it looks like that is going to be the plan Ooh, managed to waste that i thought that one was going to get an attack off that was terrifying He's going to use our only CP. The machine spirits have answered my prayers. And then he's going to kill him with... Oh, God. Never mind. Well, luckily, due to the fact that they only get 6 AP, this team is pretty much stuck for the time being. We really have to hope that nobody on our flanks right here ends up running out of CP as well. If they actually end up with bolter jams there, it's going to be very, very nasty. Where that whole luck plays into it. 4 CP on this turn. Let's get his bolter unjammed first and foremost. And we do have kind of backup plans right here. This guy can turn and take shots at him if he needs to. Let's make sure that he's firing with the Storm Boulder before I take the shot here. There's the first round fired, which leaves him... Yikes. Wanting, but the second round is going to find purchase. So very good. We got a piece of him there. And on a bonus, that leaves us... Well, he can still... Yeah, he's still going to be able to... Overwatch. Going into Overwatch. This unit should be able to finally get into... A good position to block this off so this team can advance and at this point what I would do as a monster guy if I was playing gene stealers is I would spawn right here so we're gonna be ready for that thing too if that actually ends up happening we're gonna keep our eye out for it but for now they've got a little bit of a delay before they can move properly everybody else is gonna step forward loverly Let's make sure our backline guys are all ready to overwatch. I always forget these guys. Anybody that's holding my backlines, I forget about them. Just like a big jerk face. I'm like, eh, they're in the back. We don't need to worry about them. They'll be fine. There's not a whole lot of Steelers on radar right now, so I think we'll be all right. I'm, I'm not feeling too bad about this whole thing. Hopefully, this guy will waste him. We can step everybody forward. They can cover their own flanks. We can have our guys peel before the Gene Steelers even know what's hit them. I hope. Let's go ahead and bypass the turn. And I can almost guarantee you we'll catch a spawn right here. That's I'm really thinking there's going to be a spawn right there. He's managing to waste a few of these guys. Although the Gene Steelers do have a lot of units on the board right now. I don't know what their maximum amount of units is that they can spawn in this particular level. This boulder's jammed. He's going to unjam it. Oh, he rolled a 1 and a 1. God. That is the luckiest Gene Stealer on Earth. That or we have the worst aim on. God, another one. You gotta be kidding me. 
The AI seems to really be dedicating itself to that corridor right there. There it is. That's what I was expecting. I had a, I had a reasonably good feeling that that's what was going to come down to the wire here. We got 4 CP on that turn, so we're just going to accept it and take it. What I want to do now... This is a bit of a weird situation. We can advance this team and block off the corridor there. He's got us flanked, though. This Gene Stealer got to move a lot more than I expected him to. So I've got some decisions to make. We may end up spending some CP on this one. Definitely. What do we have coming down these corridors? Not enough to terrify me, actually. Let's consider, then, what I was thinking is moving him to here, facing him this way, overwatching him. Having this guy just turn himself around and overwatch this way. Or maybe step forward, turn around, and overwatch this way. I don't really know how that's going to pan out. That would cost him three, which means he has an AP to face that way. This is going to cost him five, and then two more. So this might work. Let me do the math on this a little bit. So if I send him to there, and this is arguably a pretty bad move. This might get me into trouble. He only has a couple shots to take this guy out as it comes around the corner. We overwatch it. That's going to be two. Which then, I think, should leave me safe on this flank as well. And if this works out... Scanning for enemy movement. Yeah, this is going to be a risk. If we get bad dice rolls right here, this is one of those pivotal turns in which a bad dice roll can pretty much waste you. We're not going to move the team all the way forward on this flank because if this guy ends up getting... Well, it's too late for these guys. But for this team up here, we can at least try to preserve as many of them as possible. Nope, that's not what I said to do. I only clicked. I didn't click and drag. I swear. If I could put a little camera on my finger, I would. Him, he's going to overwatch too, actually. The contact. thought being that if this breaks the line right here, he's going to come straight for them. The Gene Steelers aren't out of CP just because they murdered somebody. That leaves us with these two gentlemen still remaining to have their the overwatch assigned. There we are. Come. And I think we'll be okay now. I don't like this situation right here. This is what I would have done if I was playing the Gene Steelers, and it was precisely the situation I was hoping the AI wouldn't lock on to. Maybe I was hoping and dreaming a bit too much. They haven't spawned anything down here, surprisingly. All right, let's take our chances with one CP left over. Let's really hope that nothing goes wrong. Ending turn, and let's see if we survive. Movement, brothers. All right, first Gene Stealer down, no jams. Bolter malfunction. Bolter malfunction. That's what we were worried about. And he managed to waste that one right as it ran up on him. So we came very close to the edge there. We were on the brink. And he managed to waste that one as well, so we're good. We need to move quickly. Now, oh, he's going to try and hold. That's fun. We've got to hope for no jams down here. 6 CP generated, so that's very, very good, actually. I think what I'll consider doing is let's rectify Squad Gideon first. I'm Squad, squad Lorenzo. Let's see here. He's got to unjam his bolter. Unjamming weapon. But beyond that, there's not a whole lot of other issues. That's going to cost him five, which is going to use up a good grip of my CP, but he will be in position for future combats. Or we can, well, I don't know if I'm ready to bite yet. Let's half peel him for now. And then he's going to set up Overwatch here in case anything else spawns in this little nasty region, which is a likelihood. It could happen. The other thing that I want to consider is how we want to deal with this up here. And that is part of the reason I decided to... Oh, God, they haven't got this door open. That's fun. Well, then, let's step the rest of the squad forward. Get that door open. And as much as I want to kind of hang back, I think we'll be all right if we just keep marching past with this team. They seem to be accomplishing their goals well. We do need people to work in cohesion, though. That's the big problem, is we need everybody to be on the same page. And this entire time, the team up here on top has actually been a little bit behind in all of their actions. 
I'm a little terrified to storm this room right now. One of our options, we have two things in front of us. We can either step to here and spend a buttload of CP trying to waste this guy right here just so we can get in position on the next turn. And we also risk the fact that they may spawn something right here, run up and insta-give me. That's the other action that we're kind of facing off against. Or we can do what we did in the previous turn and just allow them to overwatch here and just hope that the AI slips. I wouldn't slip if I was playing the Gene Stealers. I would just keep pressure up right here until they gambled. Unfortunately, well, there's two ways we could do this, actually. Let me step him back into this little corridor. I didn't think about that. Technically, I think this is our longest this is our longest firing line. I might consider stepping this guy back to here and having him cover this firing line. That's actually a strategy that I hadn't taken a look at. We're going to cross our overwatches right here just in case. For enemy contact. Because if I mean it's it's tough. I'm not a gambler, so if I was a gambler, I would step him up to here and I would just hope that this cover would hold. But as we've seen in the last couple turns, sometimes they make a run past just withering gunfire and there's nothing you can do about it. Here we need Omnio all ready to overwatch. And we need Lorenzo ready to, to overwatch and keep everything nice and clean on their behalves. I think because this team is starting to advance towards this objective, we're going to see some spawns from down here pretty soon. I would not run it past the AI. They're going to force me, but that's also going to force them to take pressure off this area too. We'll kind of see how this whole thing goes. Let's get rolling. Alright, and he wasted him. Very nice. Turn him into little nasty giblets. And these guys are playing it smart. They're actually not going to focus on us if they can. We've got a kill right here. Five and a six when we needed a five, or no, a six plus to kill. And that's going to be the end of their turn. I actually think that we've he spawned two right there, which is going to hurt him, I think. Holding position. Not to a ridiculous extent, but it is going to cause him problems. We only got two CP, but I forgot to reroll it once again. Oh, bad eyesight. We'll live with it for now. There's nothing coming from this direction, so he's got this locked down. Weapon at the ready. This means that Lorenzo, I believe, is absolutely ready to go. Brother Dino is going to be taking the lead so he can deliver kicks in the head. I've already told that joke, but you know what? Sometimes you got to recycle. Sometimes you just got to recycle. That leaves him a firing line here. The other option that I'm faced with is how to get somebody into position and overwatch this. Which is my other concern. I don't like his overextended position right now. I think what I'll do instead, though, is I'm going to secure my back flank... I'm going to step him back by one. Securing position. Actually, I don't know what the wisest decision is right here. I think he can fire... Let's take a look and figure out what we can do. That's bare minimum going to cost me two AP. And that leaves him two for an yes, overwatch. So let's just put him in the room for now until he has time to retreat. I think that's going to be all I can do since I already extended him down into this hallway. Oh, and he got a kill with his first shot. I'm proud of you, buddy. I, he, oh, he fired a double six. Very nice. Let's go ahead and have him overwatch. That'll at least give him three shots before they get to him, which is what we were gambling on up here. They've already been overwatched. This gentleman here is guarding. Just in case they make a... If they kill him and they manage to come this way, we want somebody guarding right here. I think guarding has the added effect... That allows you to oh it allows you to reroll your dice. That's amazing. We've only got two AP, but I don't or I'm sorry, two CP, but I don't see a whole lot of contention being put down on us. All they've really got right now is them right there. I didn't hear any spawns over here, so I think we'll be alright. I'm not seeing anything that's causing me to quiver. Alrighty, all my yeah, everything's in place. Let's end the turn. And he manages to get the kill. Alright, so we're gonna have to Oh, his weapon malfunctioned on that shot, though. At least he managed to get... At least he got the kill. That's all we can really ask for. In an earlier episode, I was talking about with the Warhammer lore, and I was a little misinformed. What I was talking about... Let's reroll our command points, because we only got two. There's three. All right. Let's get this team moving. We want these guys down the hallway as rapidly as possible. Where's that spawn at? Okay, that spawn's not anywhere near close enough to cause us any pain right now. Let's get these guys all clear. And there is going to be a, 
a little rift in between our battle brothers. With Watching for enemy contact. That line is covered. What I would very much prefer, actually, with this unit is to get him a little bit better of a firing line. This firing line is not optimal right here, and it's not making me feel a whole lot of confidence. Move. He's got to turn, and then he's got to turn again, so I guess that does cost 3 AP. God. They are really just whittling me down on the AP costs here. I guess we'll spend a CP to get Overwatch going here, just in case. The enemy will fall before me. We've got two CP left. Let's do our backline overwatches. Hopefully we don't have any ridiculous malfunctions, but I did want to talk about that. The reason the guns malfunction, in an earlier episode I talked about, you know, in the future you'd figure they had better guns. Well, these guys follow a machine cult, and the problem with following the machine cult is that they often spend more time standing around a console and performing like the first rites and doing consecrations and all kinds of crazy stuff on the console than they actually do performing the mission they're supposed to be performing. Let's go ahead and move these guys over here. And so it sort of explains, like, R&D really doesn't exist within the Empire. In fact, it's considered heresy. They like to stick to tradition, and they'll really only use a new weapon that they find on a Space Hulk, which explains why we're here. Also, in early in this episode, I think I said that the Blood Angels were destroyed down to 50 members by entering a Space Hulk. I don't know if this game is the story of that, or if this is a different breaching, but... Things to consider, things to consider. I'm gonna leave Gideon in the back, just in case. And I believe everybody's assigned to their allotted goals. Let's get this thing rolling. My weapon has failed. Okay, there goes our first CP, first unfortunately. And there's our first kill. We've got one CP left over for our sergeant up here, but he managed to get through there without his bolter jamming. And now they're finally deciding to come at us from this direction. That's actually exactly what we wanted. The more areas we force the Gene Stealers to fight from, the less they can spawn on us. So instead of getting like five from one direction, which is potentially dangerous for a crew member, if this guy was trying to hold this down and they spawn like five on us, chances are he would kill all of them, but only on a really good CP turn. If we didn't have a lot of CP, it'd be a little bit of a gamble. It'd be like, oh, we'd be in a little bit of trouble. I'm going to move him forward two so that we're still advanced. Actually, let's move him forward one. I want to make sure that we still have the ability to get a couple shots off here. We do have a decent CP turn. We're not completely flush with CP, but we do have some. Now our final battle brother is going to be this guy right here. He's trying to get into this position, so I want him to fire at this door as we move forward. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Let's go ahead and we'll move him the full allotment, I guess. I don't see any reason not to. Yikes, he didn't manage to get that door down, so that's a problem. A problem that needs to be remedied. I was very much assuming that with two dice on three rolls, he would eventually get that taken care of. There's no spawns down here, though, and our flamer... Or no, this is our auto cannon. This is our big assault troop, our support troop. We need him to be right here so that he can auto cannon this body and kill it off. I'm not... We'll have him turn. Yeah, we'll leave him with his back to here because I think this brother should be able to handle it. He's got 4 CP. If he doesn't pull it off, I'll be incredibly surprised. Overwatch protocol initiated. Get an Overwatch there, an Overwatch there. And this is pretty much coming together exactly as we had wanted. Our peeling strategy is working fantastic. All right. And I was calling it, I was, I wrote a joke, and I was calling it the Terminator Onion. Let's see, the Terminator, if peeling like an onion, Terminator Onion metaphor, the Tom. But, unfortunately, I lacked the foresight to mention it during the course of the episode. I think everybody's in position. I'm being very paranoid because I've screwed myself a lot while playing alone by not putting people in the position they need to be, just forgetting to do things, basically. Hopefully, yeah... Oh god, sometimes it zooms in and you get the jam. Alright, so there's the kill. I'm a little worried about the bottom team, but we'll live with it for now. That Gene Steeler's gonna hang back a tad. This one's gonna eat a bunch of bolts, which is fine. Loverly. And we've got nothing else for this turn. I think we've pretty much won the war at this point. The episode is running a tad long, largely due to the fact that I'm a very cautious player. I told you guys that. We got 6 CP on that one, very nice. 
I'm a very cautious player when I play games like this, so it's kind of a, a side effect of my condition. I'm going to move him to there. And we're actually going to use CP to get him on Overwatch right now. There we go. Nice and Overwatched. He's going to step forward. Oh, nope, he's still going to fire, but he's still, even at point-blank range, with his fist able to touch the door, not going to be able to do anything for us. And so now we are absolutely pretty much bulletproof at this point. I'm going to have him step back next turn, but for now, we're in a good spot. We're in a very good spot. Now, if there was a spawn right here, whew, now that would be murderous. That would be very, very difficult to deal with. I think we should be able to kill the first vo the body right now. And it said it took two shots. I don't feel like it worked though. For whatever reason, the game has been buggy. I have heard a lot of complaints on the forums about missions not working properly. It's saying I can auto can on this, but it might come down to where I have to shift everybody around just to flamethrower it. This game has been very, very buggy for a lot of people. And it's something that I, you know, it's I don't want to be, I don't want to practice obscurantism for anybody that's trying to figure out whether this game is worth their time or not. There are a lot of bugs. And, you know, sometimes when you're a fan of Warhammer 40k, you have that weird impulse to be like, I'm just not going to say anything, which is tremendously dishonest. So I do want to bring up the bugs as I see them, obviously. I very much want to bring up the bugs so that nobody gets the wrong impression about the game. I'm going to have him continue to guard right here. I don't really see any other use for Gideon. Other than an unexpected line falling. But I think we should be okay. I'm going to try and get him up to point blank maybe and shoot him. Maybe that'll work a little bit better. I'm not really positive how the whole thing's going to pan out. We've got 5 CP left over. I'm going to play on the edge a little bit. We'll use 1 CP to move him forward. If we really wanted to gamble, we could turn him with a CP. But we're going to pass the turn for now. Overwatch, Overwatch. Everybody's got a nice little green eyeball. Very good. And, you know, when you're a video gamer that's showing these kinds of things on YouTube, you always want to be as honest as possible because there's a lot of fanboyism out there and you just you want to avoid that. You don't want to fall into that pitfall because once you do, it's very difficult to recover your integrity. No. Oh my god, we just got so lucky right there. You've got to be kidding. Did he kill two? Oh, okay. I was gonna say, did he kill two in a row? Because I would be amazingly surprised if he killed two in a row. So there goes two battle brothers right there, based on really bad dice rolls. That's the only thing that you can call that right there. Terrible, terrible dice rolls. I think we played our strategy as best we could, but we ended up just kind of taking a little bit of folly there. Hopefully, we get a decent CP roll in this next turn. We got two. We're gonna re-roll it. We got a one. Even better. God. It's these moments that I'm very much tempted to swear. It is these tender moments, my friends. Let's step him in into position at the bare minimum in the hopes that we can get him... God, we don't have a lot of options right now. We're going to open the door and we're going to try and flamethrower that. Let's step this unit in because worst case scenario, we only have to complete the mission. These guys are pretty much sacrificial lambs as far as the levels are concerned. We don't have to do any extraction or anything. And I'm sincerely hoping that this decides to work. We are taking the shots, are we not? If this decides not to work, what I'll do is I'll have the cannon guy fall back to cover this corridor as best as he can. This is why Gideon was here. So let's turn him. That's going to be 2 AP and we'll put him on guard. We're also going to turn this unit around, and we're going to do a dual front right here as much as we can. I don't know if I should take the shots now. Yikes, that's a tough call. What do we have on these two corridors? Nothing. They're totally clear. Well, we're probably not going to be... Ugh, that's a tough decision. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he can get to me and take a swipe at me. Let's just overwatch it. There's only one other direction he can go, and that's over here. But since he doesn't have line of sight, I don't think that's what it's going to come down to. I guess I'm going to give up on the fact that this is just being really buggy. And... 
pull him out, I suppose. I mean, I'll have him come down here and watch one of these directions. Maybe I'll try and have him make his way over here and relieve our sergeant. Let's get our overwatches going with Scipio. I probably could have had him step back one. Yeah, stepping back one probably would have been a good choice, but he'll, he'll be fine, unless we get terrible dice rolls again. We want to make sure that these two gents practice their overwatch here. The enemy will fall before me. Alright, and I think that's about where we're going to end it. Unless I forgot to overwatch him. I did. Great. And there's the kill. And there's another kill. I do like how their names are emblazoned on the front of their armor. That's pretty cool. Scipio. And there's a final combatant that's coming in to wage war against us. We're going to have to worry about... Well, actually what I could do... This backup unit right here, I could actually just step him forward a little bit. So that his range isn't an issue. Let's step him forward by one and have him overwatch. Because even if the mob moves away from him, he should be able to shoot the gene stealer in the back of the head. And that means that he's not completely wasted where he's at. The Emperor. Is my Luckily, there's no human player here to catch on to the fact that I didn't put him on Overwatch last turn. That would have been, well, semi-nasty. Let's see if this room decides to work. Let's go ahead and cleanse it. Oh, it did count it. Alright, it just didn't put like a little check mark. And we will shed the blood of our foes. As tears for their passing. All right, so with regard to that really bad luck that we had, we only lost one unit. That's not terrible. We can take one loss. We had some really bad dice rolls in this corridor, which, I mean, there's no reason that mob should have been able to run past four squares. That means we rolled, let's see, we rolled eight dice, and we never rolled a five or a six. That's pretty brutal. That's a rough run. That's bad luck, and sometimes that's the way it goes down. But my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for the fourth mission, Cleanse and Burn of Space Hulk, the 2013 remake. I hope to see you in Mission 5, and take care out there, everybody.